Hello, my name is Mike Snyder, Mayor for the City of Port Clinton. What I'm about to present to you is the forward-looking infrastructure project that's been discussed in the city for the past year and a half. This presentation was given to City Council the second Tuesday of November and is available on the city and my personal Facebook page. However, you need to watch the entire City Council meeting. So we felt it best that I, I redo this uh, in just this format so folks that have any questions can, can watch and, and hopefully have those questions asked and answered. So what are we going to do here today? We're going to talk about the forward-looking infrastructure project, where we've been the past 18 months, where we are today, and where we are going forward. When I first decided to run for mayor of the city of Port Clinton, I met with two groups the then juniors at Port Clinton High School, and a group of about 200 adults in the city of Port Clinton. And I asked each group the same question. I gave them a piece of paper with about uh, 13 generalized issues facing the city of Port Clinton. And I asked them to pick five and rate from one to five their, their top five. And, and surprisingly, both groups, although slightly different order, came up with the same top five, with number one by a wide margin in both groups, being the city's infrastructure project in their city's infrastructure, water, sewer, roads, and so forth. So right after I was appointed mayor in, in April of 19, I met with Pogemeyer Design Group, uh, engineering firm out of Bowling Green. We've been doing some work looking at previous reports that previous administrations had commissioned. One was dealing with the roads, one was dealing with the storm and sanitary sewers, and one was dealing with the water lines in the city of Port Clinton. And the, the information they shared with me was, was scary at the time, and, and you'll see why here in just a moment. Their suggestion was a, a massive infrastructure project that would not only begin to address some of the issues with our aging water and sewer lines, but also address the, the, the needs of the, the pothole roads throughout town. And the idea was simple. There would be some preliminary work done to address the, the massive needs of water and sewer lines, but that didn't touch all of the roads in Port Clinton. The other part of that project would be a complete resurfacing of every road in the city of Port Clinton. The intent was to spend the summer of, of 19 talking to the community, getting everyone on board, putting it to the ballot, and moving forward from there. So we held a, a series of five or six public meetings, and, and almost from the get-go, <clears throat> there were two things that, that came out of those public meetings. The first was everyone understood that this needed to happen. They, they, we've been talking about this. I'm 49 years old my entire life. Another thing was the folks in those meetings felt that it wasn't necessary to go to the voters to, to get this moving forward. Um, they felt city, well, they knew city council had the authority to just take the action and they just said, just, just go for it. So after about the second, meeting, Pogemeyer went back and looked at this big project and tried to find some outside funding sources. And unfortunately, because of the, the amount of road resurfacing as part of this big project that was going to be undertaken that didn't rely on water lines and sewer lines, there just wasn't any funding source out there for that big project. So what their suggestion was is to take this big project and divide it into two smaller projects. Project B, everything below ground, the water lines, sewer lines, and the accompanying roadways, and Project A, which is all the road, everything above ground, all the roadways not impacted by Project B. Altogether, this big project had a back of the napkin estimate of 100, excuse me, of 20 to 22 million dollars, which sounds like a lot, but this is a scary part. Their back of the napkin estimate of the total needs of the city of Port Clinton is in the 120 to 130 million dollar range. So as we work through this conversation, keep in mind what we're talking about is again, just the, the tip of the spear. We're just trying to put in the spine right now to build off of that for future improvements to the city of Port Clinton. So what is Project B? It's implementing new or installing new water lines in certain areas of town, sanitary, storm sewers, and, and correcting the or fixing the, the roadways that are impacted by the above. A recent addition to Project B 
has been Lakeshore Drive and the erosion issues that, that we're facing down there because they do relate to it does relate to our, our storm sewer. So the, the back of the napkin estimate for the cost of Project B was $13.03 per month per EDU, equivalent dwelling unit. And the term EDU is new to the city of Port Clinton, but it's not new in the water and sewer world. It's a very equitable way of calculating usage and charges for projects just like this. And the reason they say EDU, equivalent dwelling unit, is that it's based on the fact that a house, a residential house, has a value of one. Everything else is based off of that. Excuse me. <coughs> For instance, I'm in the Our Guest Inn and Suites in downtown Port Clinton right now at my day job. And the EDU for a hotel room is one quarter EDU. So this hotel has 60 rooms. In essence, this hotel would be charged 15 times the EDU charge per month to get things, things moving. Another example would be the, the grist mill, which is at the intersection of Perry and, and Monroe. As a gas station, their EDU charge is based on the number of gas pumps out front. But as a bar, it's based on the number of bar stools. So again, it's a more equitable way of calculating rates based on the usage of that property. Again, this $13.03 estimate would be acted upon by city council. And remember this 1303 does not include anything related to Lakeshore Drive. Project A then would be all of the roadways not impacted by Project B. It would be placed on the ballot and again using the $100,000 home property value, the estimate for Project A would be about $7 per month on property taxes. And our intent is to take this portion of the bigger project to the voters sometime in 2021. So after hearing all of this, City Council said we really like Project B, we want you to move forward, take these back of the napkin estimates and try to get some more specific concrete numbers assigned to them so we can make a, uh, an educated choice on how we want to move forward if we want to move forward. So you may have seen uh, some surveyors throughout town this past summer uh, doing what it is they do. They took that information back to Pogemeyer, Pogemeyer crunched the numbers and determined that what we'd like to do to get started with this infrastructure project the water portion is about $8.8 .8 million. The sewer, storm and sanitary portion is about $5.4 million with an additional $2 million being allocated for the, the needed issues down on Lakeshore Drive. Again, a more concrete figure for the entire Project B is $16.2 million. So again, taking it back to the back of the napkin EDU estimates, how did they come up with the $13.03? The water EDU charge, the sewer EDU charge gets us to that 1303. Well, why why is there a water and sewer? Why are they why are they separated? I just get one bill. Well, the, the reality is much like the Port Clinton School District, the school district extends beyond the city limits of Port Clinton. Port Clinton also has a water district and a sewer district whose boundaries also extend beyond the city limits of Port Clinton. Our water district extends south down Ottawa Drive and then southwest down Fremont Road outside the city limits. And our sewer district extends down Lakeshore Drive all the way out to Camp Perry and Erie Industrial Park. So based on these, these numbers here, these 3550, based on our current water bills, Pogemeyer just did a back of the napkin estimate of what the EDU total EDU calculations would be to come up with these numbers. More accurately, our water district has just over 3,600, oh, excuse me, 4,600 EDU, and our sewer district has just under 5,000 EDUs. Recalculating everything based on that 16 million gets us to $12.47 EDU charge. It's my administration's request to City Council to implement a $12.50, just to keep it simple, $12.50 EDU charge effective January 1 of 2021. Well, why 
because this next slide says so. Everyone we talk to from Pogamar to other communities suggests that it's the wise thing to do. Uh, some of the things that have been calculated into that $12.50 um, are our ability to plan for future phases. Again, we're only looking at a $16 million project. Our needs in today's dollars are in that 120 to $130 million range. Project B is just the, the spine that can be built off of when we talk about our, our sewer system. Also allows us to, to get a better handle on maintenance issues. You know, we have a, a very, very aging infrastructure. Um, a few weeks before this presentation was made to city council, we started to receive phone calls from residents in, in the Alice and Lee area that were having a sewer gas smell in their homes and, and issues flushing their commodes and, and getting their tubs and stuff to, to drain properly. So our crews went out there with their cameras and, and went into some sewer lines which they had just cameraed a couple years prior and they were fine. What they discovered is uh, about 300 feet of sewer line had collapsed. Uh, lots of roots had, had penetrated the sewer lines and that was causing all the problems. Again, something we had to address immediately. That was a, a 32 or $33,000 maintenance item that, that was not budgeted for, but it needed to be addressed. And then of course, the, the what's next. Uh, again, Lakeshore Drive was not part of the conversation that we had back uh, when this all started. It is part of the conversation today. We know that there will be future Lakeshore Drive type issues that need to be addressed. And this will allow us to, to hopefully plan accordingly when those issues pop up. So moving forward, and if you watch the video that's currently on the cities and my personal Facebook page. This is gonna be slightly different uh, because we did a little research and found out something different than what you see here. Our original intent was to place three ordinances in front of city council. This last one, the funding was actually addressed early on in this process. So there is no uh, ordinance number three authorizing the, the financing of FLIP. We already have that paperwork and everything in place. But before council today, is an ordinance authorizing the EDU charge, the $12.50 effective the first part of, of January of 2021. And, and those of you that have received your current water bill, you'll see a little notation at the bottom uh, noting the intent as well. And then the other, <clears throat> the other ordinance is authorizing the engineering uh, to continue. Again, getting really specific, putting catch basins in this location and, and the slopes of of asphalt and so forth, getting us to, to where we need to be. So moving forward, we're gonna then move some dirt. EDU charge will appear in the, the January 2021 utility bill. That will then allow the engineers to do what they need to do. In late 2021, our intent is to put this project out for bid, open those bids with construction beginning in early 2022, lasting anywhere from 18 excuse me, 12 to 18 months. I know this, <coughs> excuse me, this slide is, is difficult to see. I've broken it down into some bigger pictures. You can stop the video and, and look more, more carefully. These tags are just something I've put in there. Uh, it's nothing part of the project, but you see what's happening on the, the far east side of town in the Tree Street area, the, the western downtown down Lakeshore Drive, 2nd Street, Harrison, so forth, the southwest, and again, this is where you see the water district extending beyond the city limits of Port Clinton and the center of the city and what's happening in, in that area. Again, I encourage you to, uh, to stop me as you see me around town, give City Hall a call if you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer them for you. Uh, this is something that is, is well overdue in the city of Port Clinton and I look forward to, to working with city council and uh, improving our, our community. Thank you very much.